Hey guys, welcome back to Micho Makes. My name is Micho. I like to make stuff. Today I've got part number 23 of the Toyota Sprinter Truno A86 by Dago Astini. Uh, without further ado, let's just jump right into this one. All right, starting off, we have our cover here. Got our frames are back. Hello. Got our parts. And we've got our instruction books. So let's take a look initially at what we might be looking at here. Looks like we've got more history stuff too as well. And okay, diving into the instruction booklet this time. Um, I actually did a little bit of research in this. And actually, <laughs> what's really funny is that a lot of the premise in initial D and where probably the A86 got a lot of its notoriety was actually because of the relationship between Takumi and that other girl, Mogi, um, where she, uh, you know, they went on dates. And this is actually the top dating cars that people went on dates on, <laughs> like actual like relationships and going driving for dates and the, the types of vehicles that guys would take girls out on uh, dates with. So they actually have the, you know, the Mark III Supra, Celica GT4 here, all-wheel drive. Um, what is that, a SEMA? I'm not too sure. Honda Prelude here too as well. And it's just a whole deal about cars that were popular to, for people to go out and go, go out on dates with. So that's pretty funny, uh, pretty funny article that they... <laughs> Somebody wrote up on on what would be you know considered a really nice car to go out on a date with. And then we go into this, and this is called the Toyota Velfire, Veru Fire. Yeah, I don't know. I've never seen this before. It's got a nice V6 in it too as well. It looks like it's got a ton of interior space too. Um, yeah, don't know too much about this. But uh, it's a cool thing that, you know, minivan culture is actually still huge in Japan, too, as well, um, with limited space. But, yeah, minivans are pretty cool. And we drive right into what we have here. And this does look like the drive shaft. Let me take a look real quick. And I was right. This is the uh, drive shaft uh, right here. It's propeller shaft. Propeller shaft. Um, right there. And we're going to be installing the drive shaft, or at least assembling it. Um, probably not installing it yet because there are some... I've I've removed the drive shaft um, on, on vehicles before, and um, it, it does... Ha it needs brackets, support brackets too as well, as you can see kind of right here, to get us to at attached to the, um, the underside of the vehicle. But yeah. So you've got like a universal joints here and stuff. So uh, without further ado, let's just jump right into breaking this packet open. All right, starting out, we have some um, AP screws here. Part of the drive shaft. Now, what's funny is that drive shaft is probably one of the more unwieldy, huge pieces on a vehicle um, because it's so long and narrow, and it's kind of hard to install sometimes by yourself. But because it's heavy, it's metal. It's trying to prevent any kind of torquing going on from getting power from the front of the engine to or the engine to the rear rear axle. Um, so it's big and heavy, but this <laughs> it's all plastic. No metal, part, no metal parts beyond the screws, I don't think, in this piece. Looks like this is a support bracket here. Universal joint. Three different pieces of the universal joint. And, oops. Connection piece too as well. And that's it. Okay, we're gonna start out with grabbing this piece right here, and then this piece, 
and looks like there's a little hole we have to align right there to combine these put that together we want to keep the orientation and kind of remember which side's which too so put that on there um, and then we we'll grab this collar piece here um, and there's a little little guide that we have to kind of kind of be mindful of so that is actually supposed to face this direction right here slide that on this way and then um, looks like we open this up and there's a little little nub there slide this piece here on and then we can put this back in the middle kind of locks this together but looks like we got to put two screws in now too Okay, there's that one. Go put this one and this one. Awesome. I've got this orientation again. This was towards this direction over here on this one. It looks like we are attaching um, one of these joints here. And there are four holes on each side, so you don't need to worry on what goes which one. Um, you just kind of pick one. Should be okay. But we have to do it on the side that does not have this kind of nub with the point direction. So we're going to put on this side over here. Let's get this aligned. Right. Actually, it probably did this a little too tight because you're supposed to want to have these move, right? Back and forth if you do the drive shaft. So I want to loosen these just a little bit. There you go. Much better. All right. So that part is complete for this piece. Okay. So we're going to move on to the larger drive shaft now, a larger piece of the drive shaft here. Um, I don't think there's any orientation issues here, so let's we'll try it out first and just put it together. Yeah, looks good. All right, it looks like we just take three more screws. center one and that middle piece of the drive shaft is done we're going to take the universal joints here again alignment does not matter because they're, again there are holes on each side so it's all good but instructions definitely call out as I did for the last one do not over tighten these just because you want to have these free moving um, with drive shafts, it's kind of interesting to know that you know these universal joints here. Um, being able to put that much torque from an engine producing power, and so that all that power can get transferred to the rear wheels, and yet you have to have a bend. You know, in in, in that in that pole to transfer the power. It's pretty interesting to see that these universal joints can handle that much torque and not just rip itself apart. Again, I over tighten that one so they can already feel it's too tight. Um, let's uh, loosen up both of these. This one and this one. That one's looser. Much better. Looks good. Right here is this other one.
Again, too tight. <laughs> cool. Luther. I'm going to tighten this one up just a little bit because there's a little gap you can kind of see there. Just a little bit. Excellent. So both these sides are moving. Nice and free. And we've got this piece complete. So to wrap up completing the drive shaft, take our other piece. I don't believe there's a issue with alignment, but we're just going to turn one of these sides because I believe you know they're basically the same. And then turn this one again. This is called the universal joint. You put it right here and see how it connected like that. I'm going to connect this one to this one. Unfortunately, I don't have three hands, so alignment might be a little tricky, but we'll make it work. Kind of loose there. And this side right here. Make sure that's in focus for you guys. A little too tight on that one. Not tight enough on this one. That's pretty good. Again, the whole point, obviously, a of a drive shaft is to um, transfer power from the engine, right? I believe this is the engine side over here to the rear uh, axle, which will have the power transfer to the rear wheels and so there's a bend obviously if you could you could have a straight drive shaft and i've seen vehicles that have that um, but with like car and vehicles um, you're normally not going to be able to have that just because um just stuff's in the way and designing so they have these universal joints that you're able to have the drive shaft at a bend so that it can still transfer power to the rear wheels without having to, um, uh, you know, have a straight drive shaft. You're able to run, people are able to run a straight drive shaft because there is a little bit of a power loss at this joint uh, too as well, um, just because, you know, it's not transferring it directly. But, um, you know, it, it's something that you just have to consider when you're making a car and people or, or modifying a car too as well. And uh, th these are all just kind of design choices that people like to make too as well. But um, yeah, this is the universal joint. See how much bend you can put into it. Um, and, you know, if you just hold the alignment right, you can ha have it so that, you know, everything will be on the same uh, plane and still be able to function and be able to transfer that power too as well. So really cool piece. Um, the drive shaft is complete. Um, it will be in the vehicle soon enough. But uh, thanks again for joining me on part number what was this part number 23 of the Toyota Sprinter Trino A86 by Dago Astini. Um, really do appreciate you guys sticking with me. I know that there's a lot, especially with these small kind of parts, individual parts. I'm not putting anything on the main body, but still needs to get done. But thanks very much for joining me again. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. That'd be awesome. If you haven't subscribed yet, please like and subscribe. I really do appreciate your support. We'll see you guys in the next one, part number 24. Uh, let's take a quick preview of what part 24 is going to have, have us do. And it looks like... Um, see here that looks like i won't say the part of the rear axle but it looks like it's part of the rear frame uh too as well it looks like actually the rear or or maybe the front um suspension um spring supports that actually might be the rear one it's actually my my apologies the rear ones but um we'll see you then thanks very much i'll see you guys in the next one bye for now